Coming up on WUFT's First at Five, a hate crime at the University of Florida. The minority group police say student was targeting, and what he said to that officer that arrested him. Tackling homelessness in Florida, the bill moving through the state legislature that could change where Gainesville's most vulnerable neighborhoods are living. Plus, temperatures are taking a dip after days of rain. The UF weather team is tracking your next warm-up. First at 5 starts right now. First at 5, from the University of Florida's College of Journalism and Communications, you're watching WUFT News. A UF student is facing charges of threatening and using racial slurs at a weekend event organized by the university's Black Student Union. This is First at Five. I'm Sarah Sowers. And I'm Kennedy Mason. A UPD officer says they noticed the student's odd behavior for several minutes before intervening. WUFT's Jake Lynch is live at the Performing Arts Center. Jake, a report says the student even said a racial slur towards the officer. She described this as an escalation. Authorities say that one of the men that Park shoved was actually somebody he had been sending death threats and racial slurs to online. And when people searched Park, and when the police searched Park, they found a black kitchen knife on him. A police report details the actions of Jacob Park, the night of the Florida Invitational Step Show. Authorities say Park shoved multiple people in attendance at the Black Student Ran event. To see um, a situation like this happen on Saturday night is something that I have not experienced before and it's extremely hard to have to say that I've experienced that now. Authorities say Park made derogatory comments to a UPD officer about her race and asked her if she was from Africa, then told her she should visit the continent. Park was a distraction that students say they were glad police eliminated through the arrest. And regardless, we were able to still host an amazing event um, and we just hope that this does not happen to any other communities in the future. Students say this will not stop their celebration of their heritage and hope that acts of hatred such as this will cease. The university released a statement today saying the University of Florida is a community that values human dignity and there is no place for violence, threats or bigotry here. We have been clear and unapologetic about our commitment to keeping every member of the Gator Nation safe. We will enforce the law. While the Family Educational Rights and Privacy Act law prevents us from divulging confidential student record information, the University of Florida Police Department arrested this student and has issued a trespass warning to him, barring him from campus for three years. Student conduct code violations are referred to the Office of Student Life. In addition to racial slurs, they say that Park was actually sending uh, inappropriate messages about people's sexual orientation. And he was arrested, then charged with battery, having a concealed weapon, along with writing death threats. Live here at the Performing Arts Center, Jake Lynch, WUFT News. Tonight, parts of our area are under a frost or freeze advisory. The UF weather team is tracking temperatures expecting to drop down in the 30s for parts of north central Florida. The cool down came after a weekend cold front brought steady rain over the last few days. UF forecaster Matthew Clark is here to tell us a little bit more about the new wave of cold weather. Yeah, and you can start to feel those temperatures start to decrease as the weekend moved along. And right now on Tuesday morning when you wake up, you can see some freezing temperatures in Live Oak, Lake City, Perry, and Cross City. But for the most part, we are in our low 30s across the greater part of north central Florida. Now, with those freezing temperatures does come a freeze warning, and this is in effect from 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. as we head into our Tuesday morning. Live Oak, Lake City, and High Springs are all affected by this. We also have a frost advisory in parts of Stark, Gainesville, and Brunson. Now taking a look at our hour by hour as we head into our evening, we see this start a uh, deep drop off heading into our evening hours and that's because we don't really have a cloud cover so those temperatures are going to really start to rapidly decrease as we head into our Tuesday morning. Gainesville has got you covered for the chilly nights ahead of us. Officials have announced the activation of the cold night shelter program for the third time this year. Families in need of shelter can now head to St. Francis House. Meanwhile, individual adults are welcome to enjoy a warm place to stay at Grace Marketplace. The program will remain active until Wednesday as long as temperatures remain below 45 degrees Fahrenheit. A K-9 officer in Marion County is still recovering at the UF Veterinary Hospital after being shot during a confrontation last week. The community shared an outpouring of support on Facebook when the Sheriff's Office announced K-9 officer Leo was in critical condition. 
He was shot by a suspect and rushed to the veterinary hospital in Gainesville by Marion County Fire Rescue in a first-of-its-kind transport with veterinarians on board treating Leo. Sheriff Billy Woods gave an update on Leo's condition earlier today and thanked everyone involved in saving the canine. Their staff treated Leo as he was transported from Ocala to Gainesville. And I want to thank Marion County Fire Rescue for transporting Leo as well. As the Ocala Police Department, the Florida Highway Patrol, and Gainesville PD for helping clear traffic on Saturday as Leo was rushed to Gainesville. Leo is currently stable and the suspect who shot him was pronounced dead at the hospital. The Sheriff's Office is asking that anyone who is showing support for Leo with cards or gifts drop them off at the Sheriff's Office instead of the veterinary hospital. Two people are dead and another one is hurt after a weakened fire in Suwannee County. Along with Suwannee County Fire Rescue, the Live Oak Fire Department says they work to rescue those trapped inside the house. Officials say two of those involved did not make it out alive despite the rescue efforts. Fire crews have not released the condition of the other victim. They are investigating what started the fire. Swanee County Sheriff's Office arrested a woman for defrauding a local business. The business owner contacted officials about suspicions that his former bookkeeper, Ashley Nicole Dalton, had illegally taken money from the company. According to officials, Dalton had already had access to the company's credit cards before acquiring another one illegally following her trail. Officials say they found unauthorized transactions dating back to 2018 that exceeded $1 million. Officials say Dalton attempted to deflect the blame before being arrested for grand threat grand theft and fraudulent use of credit card charges. She's held at Swanee County Jail with a bond of more than a million dollars. A hit and run crash leaves one person dead over the weekend. Florida Highway Patrol officials say a pedestrian was hit by a dark gray Acura MDX SUV traveling north on County Road 25A on Sunday. The car's owner fled the scene, leaving the 47 year old pedestrian who succumbed his injuries, according to officials. Officials are asking whoever has any, if anyone has any information, that they would contact 352-512-6643. The Florida Coalition to End Homelessness reports Florida has the third most reported cases of houselessness in the nation. WUFT's Alex Land investigated how a new bill, Florida, how a new Florida bill might impact those without a home. State legislature is currently having discussions about the lack of affordable housing and the impact it has on homelessness. A new Florida Senate bill could combat the issue. The bill requires local governments to establish safe campgrounds for people statewide. We went to St. Francis House to find out the local impacts of this bill. Lori Schiffbauer has always wanted to help people. Well, I, you know, I, I've actually been doing nonprofit work since 1985. So I'm very old. <laughs> I've been doing nonprofit for a long time. And when my, I was a kid, my mom said to me, Lori, what do you want to do? And I said, I, I, I was 12. I said, you know, I don't know. I just want to make the world better. As executive director of St. Francis House in Gainesville, she's able to do just that. Lori has high hopes for a Florida bill in discussion that has the potential to increase funding to support the houseless population. The, the big issue is finding affordable housing for homeless and extremely low income. There is an incredible shortage of those in our community. What this will allow us to do, if it goes through, is to have a place where people can stay safely. Senate Bill 1530 would ban people from sleeping in public spaces. However, if approved, local governments would be required to establish places where people could legally stay overnight. Lori's concerned about the funding. Well, if they don't have the funding to open up a safe community for these people to live in, then you're criminalizing homelessness. Lori expects these campgrounds to have full security, substance limitations, and mental health resources. Gainesville City Commissioners voted to allocate $700,000 to combat homelessness locally. A financial commitment Lori sees as a way to help the houseless population and for her to achieve the goal she set when she was 12. When you see them succeed and get housed, it's like, yes, you know, you, you kind of um, are grateful to be part of that journey to success. Senate Bill 1530 passed favorably through the Senate Judiciary Committee on February 5th. If enacted, it will be put into effect in October. Live in the studio, Alex Land, WUFT News.
A new bill has shaken the international community at the University of Florida. Florida Senate Bill 846 prohibits any state university and college from accepting grants or entering a partnership with any foreign higher education institution unless approved by the Board of Governors. International students around the university demonstrated concerns around the bill asking possible changes to their travel requirements. According to an email of the of the UF International Center, students should not be concerned as this bill would not override federal travel requirements. If you are in assistantship or a fellowship, you should get in contact with their Office of Employment with any questions. Coming up on WUFT News First at 5, a county will be voting whether to implement a new sales tax in the ballot. If passed, the decision whether it takes effect will lie in your hands. And a viral video sparks controversy in Alachua County Public Schools during its debate on porn materials in schools. We bring you more information about the issue and what members of the community had to say about it after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Alachua County Elementary and Middle Schools will continue to see a controversial book on its shelves. The book was objected in the Terwilliger Elementary School Library in 2023, but it was reevaluated at a recent Alachua County Public School hearing. In a statement on Friday, Alachua County Public Schools Superintendent Shane Andrew commented on a January 24th Alachua County Public School hearing. The hearing discusses the book Melissa about a fourth grader who everyone thinks is a boy, but who she herself thinks is a girl. The controversy is about the words porn and dirty magazines in the book. Tara Williger Elementary School Assistant Principal Garrett Jones shared his opinions at the meeting, which went viral. Mr. Jones, I believe you two have children, is that correct? Yes. What ages are they? Uh, 18, 16, and 13. And would you find it appropriate if they brought this book home or talking about dirty magazines and pornography in a K-5 environment? I think it would open up a conversation that we would have. Based on the statement, the book contains no pornographic scenes, pictures, or descriptions. I do not see the need to have this book available in a public school. The book will remain in the school libraries. Voters in Marion County will soon find out if they can weigh in on a half-cent sales tax proposed by the school district. Tomorrow, the Board of County Commissioners will vote to approve a 10-year half-cent sales tax. The tax would provide funding for public schools. We told you last week about the county's growth and plans to add two elementary schools and a high school west of I-75. If approved, voters would cast their ballot in November's general election. The roller coaster gas prices are continuing this week in Gainesville. While, we, while we've seen a brief drop, prices are still higher than the state average. The current average is around $3.34 according to AAA. This is a decrease from yesterday's $3.35 average. However, this is still higher than Florida and national averages of over $3.28. The Williston Airport is among the 10 airports across Florida, splitting millions of dollars. A big change is on the cards for Williston Municipal Airport as it is about to receive a sum of money. The Federal Aviation Authority is awarding $500,000 to Williston Airport for a new terminal. Officials say the new terminal will help the airport to meet its current and future demands. The investment is part of a bigger project to improve Florida's airports. Officials say more than $100 million will be given to improve airports infrastructures and create jobs. Local students will be heading to the nation's capital where they will be competing against other science students at a national level. A team from Buholtz High School will compete at the National Science Bowl after winning the North Florida Science Bowl. For the second time, the team will be traveling to Washington, D.C. this spring where they take compete other students throughout the country in different math and science related challenges. The team's coach Mark Moody says the students have been preparing for several years and look forward to representing their region. The National Science Bowl is an annual competition organized by the U.S. Department of Energy's Office of Science. Yeah, coming up, I'll talk about those cold temperatures that we see on Tuesday morning. You can see those cold temperatures here. I'll also talk about how we can expect a sunny, dry week ahead with some showers possible on Friday. You're watching WUFT-TV News. 
Yeah, that front that we saw this past weekend was a part of a cold front system and that cold air is finally starting to reach us as we head into tonight into tomorrow morning. We can see that freeze warning in parts of Live Oak, Lake City and High Springs and a frost advisory is possible for Stark, Gainesville and Brunson. Now it is a part of that system that we got this past weekend and we can really see those rainfall amounts. We almost got three inches in Gainesville here, three and a half up in Jacksonville, but for the most part of greater north central Florida, we saw a lot of rain. Two inches, three inches was anywhere in the range of that. Now, if we look at next weekend, we finally get some sunshine on the weekend compared to last weekend where we didn't see the sun for three days. We can see those temperatures in the high 60s and low 70s as parts on Saturday and Sunday. And it's just going to be a beautiful weekend to get out and about and do some normal weekend activities. Now, you can see right now we can finally see the sun again on our campus cam right now, 65 degrees right now, just a beautiful night. But as we head into those evening hours, it's going to start to drop and get really chilly again. Now we can see right now that those high temperatures today, 65 Gainesville, like I said, we are at a highs right now, 64 in Jacksonville. For the most part, we were in the mid 60s and low 60s up north. Average for this time of year was 72 degrees. And you can really see those temperatures start to drop off as we head into our Tuesday morning. It's when we really get cold, 32 Live Oak, 32 Lake City, and 31 in Cross City. But for the most part, we do have those low 30s across North Central Florida. We do have a couple 40s in Jacksonville, St. Augustine, and Daytona. But for the most part, when you wake up, it's going to be very chilly. You can see as our live satellite cam right now, you can see that low pressure system really start to move into the North Atlantic and a couple residual showers off the coast of Jacksonville, not really affecting us anyway. You see that high pressure system right now really bringing in that cold, dry air. And we are going to keep an eye on that high pressure system as that's what's going to dictate the weather for the next week. See that high pressure system start to move towards us as Tuesday morning into Wednesday night into Wednesday night as it's going to start to move south. And that's when our next system is going to start to move in Thursday night into Friday. That's when we can expect those showers on Friday. Now it is going to relatively be nice out for the next week. Really got a lot of sunshine for the most part. We can see here as we head into the early parts of this week, we can see we are in the thirties as we wake up on our Tuesday and Wednesday morning. We start to warm up and then that system moves through on Friday. Get that 50% chance of rain drops us back down for a Saturday and Sunday that is sunny and relatively mild and we start to heat up into later parts of next week. Coming up in sports, after playing two games in the Bubbly Invitational over the weekend, the Gators softball team matches up with a top 10 opponent tonight. We will tell you who that is after the break. You're watching WUFT TV News. Welcome to sports, I'm Kaylin Sims. After playing only two games in the Bubbly Invitational over the weekend here in Gainesville, the Gators softball team now faces sixth ranked Oklahoma State at home tonight. In the circle against Georgia Southern, Gators freshman pitcher Keegan Rothrock got the win striking out eight while walking two. Florida ended the game against the Eagles in the bottom of the sixth inning winning eight to zero. In Game 2 against Loyola, the Gators took a 5-0 lead in the first inning and cruised to a 10-1 win in five innings. The Gators will take on 6th ranked Oklahoma State tonight at 6. Meanwhile, Gators baseball did not have the outcome they hoped for Friday against St. John's. Florida fell 9-5 at home in front of an opening night record of 7,898 fans. After being rained out on Saturday and Sunday, Florida will now face UNF in Jacksonville Tuesday night at 6. On the road today, gearing up for postseason action, men's and women's swimming and diving are in Auburn, Alabama for the 2024 SEC Championships. Going into the meet, the men are 7-0 overall and 4-0 against SEC opponents, while the women are 7-1 overall, 5-0 in the SEC. The Gator men are hoping to win their 12th straight conference championship this week, while the women are seeking back-to-back -back conference titles after their first win last year since 2009. The Florida men's basketball team is ranked in the AP Top 25 poll for the first time since December 2021 after winning seven of their last eight games, including Saturday's matchup at Georgia. The now 24th ranked Gators were down six points at halftime at Georgia, but thanks to a career day by freshman Thomas Houck, who scored 17 points. Coach Todd Golden covered how important Houck was to the Gators' success. You know, hit some. I think he hit all three of his threes in the first half. Uh, all very much needed to kind of keep them at bay and keep us in the ball game. The Gators won 88 to 82 and are now 18 and 7 on the season, and will continue SEC action at Alabama Wednesday night at 7. 
And one final note, after being rained out Sunday, the Daytona 500 is taking place right now. The race started about 90 minutes ago. Yes, Kaylin, it's so great to hear that the Daytona 500 was able to happen. And we're um, just getting word now that it looks like they're about 51 laps in so far. Chase Elliott is, um, you know, kind of at the top of the pack. Um, and I'm hoping that weather is, you know, a little bit better right now than it has been over the weekend. Yeah, the weather is finally starting to clear up and we head into a pretty sunny week. We get a couple showers on Friday, but that will keep us nice and cool into Saturday and Sunday. It'll be a relatively sunny weekend, which is a much better bigger change than it was this past weekend because Daytona 500 got canceled and moved to Monday. But we do see some sunny skies this week and it's just going to be a very nice week overall. All right, thank you for that check on the weather. And now the BBC World News is coming up next and the PBS News Hour is coming up at 7. But your Florida news is always on at WUFT.org. Have a good night.